is going to is going to Tara Hunt's here? No. She has black hair now. She's not here. She's on the internet. Oh. <laughs> she is on the internet. She's got a lot of woofy. Yes, one. she does have a lot yeah. of woofy. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Is Polly on the show? Or is she just standing? Maybe just hang uh, Maybe. Okay. She might be asking questions. Be. You never can. How talk. did the She's how did the, how did the quiz Who show won? go? Emily Gibson won. Ah, Emily uh, Gibson. That wasn't rigged or anything. Uh, no, Emily no. Gibson, <laughs> she's always winning those things. You know about the boring lava fields. Oh, the lava fields. The lava fields. <laughs> oh. So, so yeah. So yeah. So stay tuned. Go grab like go grab a cup of coffee. Yeah. Because you're gonna need it. Did or you one of those energy drink things. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever those are. I don't know. Something. <laughs> it'll say it'll be plenty exciting. I'm it just, will be. It's just getting a little late. It's a little late for the kids. And you want to be able to stay awake because after I don't even know what camera I'm looking at. Uh, it's one this of those. Camera? I think it's that one. I'm guessing it's this one. You want to stay up because after crazy talk is the slumber party. That's right. Three hours? Three hours. Of crazy comedy? Yes, and ukulele lessons. Oh, ukulele right. lessons. Yeah. Ukulele lessons. Wiki 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 Right, nice. It's going to be great, and we're going to have comedians and pillow fights. I hope they don't touch oh. my pillow. Hmm. Uh, and well, hmm. what else? Well, after that, it'll be um, you and I for a few minutes. Oh, no, after that, we have another DJ. <laughs> oh, that's Tuesday, right. Actually. Two DJs. Yeah. And then after that, it'll be time for us to tell people if they need to donate. <laughs> Donating is good. That's a good idea. And then uh, it'll be morning submission. Oh, good. PDXFM. Yeah. Who's one of our premier sponsors. Yeah. And then after uh, after morning submission, uh -huh. then, and only then, it'll be time for the variety show. <laughs> only then. And if you're here in Portland... Come on down to the square tomorrow, right. 10 yes. a.m. to 10 p.m. Yes, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. in the square. Bring some non-perishable food items. That would be nice. But just come on down. Really? I want them to bring the food items. They or donate. Food, they could donate online through causes. Right. We'd appreciate that. That would be good. I wonder how long we're stretching. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep talking. See what happens. Stretching. Not that kind of <laughs> No. What? No. This. I understand. I understand this thing. Stretch it out. Stretch it. Stretch it. I'm not good at stretching things Why out. I'm so tired. It's much easier inside. Being outside is hard. I will admit that. That is. It's kind of stressful. It's more taxing being outside doing the show. You don't have and we have, you, there's not a comfy couch. We have 12 hours of outside tomorrow. But you know who's bringing us food seat. tomorrow? Another one of our hosts? Burgerville. Burger sponsors? Burgerville. 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 Burgerville will bring us food tomorrow. And Burgerville we can talk about it this time because they're actually sponsoring I know. We weren't allowed to last time. Okay. Then we've got, uh, what else do we have tomorrow for food or for sponsor stuff? Mm -hmm. Seems like somebody else was bringing us something. Ned Water. Ned Water was nice enough to drop off water for us. The other sponsor is very tasty. Not Oh, that's right. Those guys are no. Um But thank you to Ned Water. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in the Portland area uh, and you need water, water for your office or whatever, thank Ned you Ned Water. Really nice because too. because it, in terms of fundraising, they're really interesting as well. A portion of their proceeds are always donated to good causes. So. Right. So, and they give you a report on who they donated to based on your um, purchase of water. We use them down. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've seen um, their water dispenser in the office. Yes, I know. And uh, uh, what chairs else? Chairs are moving in. It looks like this is it, looking, Oh, I see a host. It looks like it might almost be time for crazy talk. Oh, oh, the glasses are on. <laughs> Get about ready. Get ready, kids. We're close. I think we're almost ready for crazy talk with oh, Dr. No, we, we got the finger. Not the same one we got a few minutes ago. But oh, that was two the, of those. <laughs> that was <laughs> just the one. Oh, no, what? the headphones are going on now, All too. Right. So we we got to be getting close. Yeah, I think so. Are you ready? Oh, I need mics. Oh. Oh. Well, you can come do over want, here. Do you want here. lab? Oh, we don't. Lab mics? We need mics. You want the Anything lab? Anything will do. Okay. Do you just need one? Uh, I need that. Over. See, this is the kind of stuff we got to do. My writer says, Hey, Dr. Normal, someone's trying to get your attention. Mike, yeah. sitting next to you. 
I don't know. You're not I'm gonna go sit over here. No, we're live. We're still live. Hi. We'll just Welcome back to 30 Hour Day. Yes. You get a little comfy there. My I feet think. aren't on the couch. It's fine. I'm just waiting. There's lots of activity occurring all of a sudden. Oh, now they're gonna take one of our cameras. Oh, they're moving. No, no, he's just moving, moving right. the camera. A little bit. Chris is just doing the cameraman thing. Chris is pushing around a little. We've got a new crop of volunteers in. They're all There's fresh a whole eyed. bunch of them. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. That's yeah, the phrase I that's was what we. For. That's what we. Fresh eyed and bushy. <laughs> Books. I've been up since this morning. I know. I've been out. I wonder doing how we're doing stuff. on donations. I don't know. I hope we're doing better than we were. I know. We were getting a little disappointed. Yeah, we were. But that's okay. Who's still up? If you're still up, put out a put out a tweet. Oh yeah, are you still that. watching? Tweet us so that we know. Yeah, let us know if you're watching the stream. We'd be interested to hear about that. Yeah. Or go buy a t-shirt. Or go buy a t-shirt or go and donate. Or let us know I what you want email. from Martin. You know what? We'll I get an, I, this is something that you might not know. You really, um, I don't like having new emails. And so whenever I get a new email, I have to go and make sure that it's marked as red so that the little uh, bubble doesn't pop up on my iPhone with the number that tells me how many emails badge. I have. They call it a badge. Whatever. I don't care what it's called. It's irritating. It bothers me because it doesn't look uniform. And so if you donate... It will actually send me an email to tell me that you donated. Not, you know, it won't give me like any actual well, information about you, but to tell me that a new, a new donation has happened, and that will bother me. So if you'd like to irritate me, now would be an excellent time for you to make a donation. Please. On causes. Speaking of irritation, Hi. you're cutting into my time. Oh, actually, we've been stretching out Ooh, for you. Are can, you ready now? I'm, I'm, can we, I'm waiting. I have guests. I don't we, have my bump. Can my, we throw it? My can we throw it over to the good? I don't have my Dr. crazy talk Dr. bump. Normal for crazy can we make the now? toss? Yeah. Are we ready? My, do I have it here? Let me see I, if I've got I it. I don't know, but we're, we're completely willing to give up the camera to you. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. have all the camera Crazy time talks. you need. Let's see. No, don't don't have it. Don't have the bump. All right. So so we'll have to add that in the, in the mix. Are we ready? Are we ready? Is Mike live? over to Doc? Okay, it's Mike. Oh, look at that. Hey, everybody. Oh. All right. Well, I don't have my bump, so uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's bad. So here we are, crazy talk. Well, we're a little late. Uh, we started uh, about 12.45. You know what? If you haven't donated yet, go up to Facebook, go up to Causes, donate. You need to donate. Um, it's an important cause. We've got, uh, we do have music coming in here, and we'll be here for the next, how long are we here? Two, two in the morning. Two in the morning Pacific, we'll be here. And I'm very excited. I've got some good guests lined up. And uh, again, DJ, we're setting that up. Uh, I'm behind a green screen. We can't get it working. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, that'll be good. Uh, but what I want to do is bring in a special guest. So last 30-hour day, we had Tara Hunt. Tara Hunt. Tara Hunt. You know, I always get that name wrong. If I say Tara, they say Tara. If I say Tara, they say Tara. You say potato, I say potato. I don't know. But I want to bring her in. She's over, over in Montreal, Canada. She was here last time. She did a big remote for us uh, at the last 30-hour day. It was really exciting. She's the author of The Woofy Factor, as in just, you know, what the frick is a woofy? Um, go read the book. Go check out The Woofy Factor. And I want to bring her in from Canada here. If I can just uh, just kind of um, go full screen here. Uh, do we have audio? Do we have audio on Tara? Can we bring that channel in? Do we have? Are we listening? Do we have that channel read. Okay. So there's. Ta uh, do we have? Wait a minute. That's not Tara. <laughs> That's, uh, I don't know, that looks like a dog. That's a, that's a snoring dog, okay? So that's, that's, that's a snoring dog uh, that's supposed to be Tara Hunt from, uh, from Montreal. Uh, you know, it's only, it's only, 
it's only a quarter to uh, to one here uh, on the west coast here in Portland, Oregon, and um, and I I think I think. Uh, I, I think they're East Coast time over there. So that's a little, let me figure that out. That's quarter one, quarter two, quarter to three, quarter to four. Is that right? Is that East Coast time? It's about 3.45. I think, I think Tara's fallen asleep and left the webcam on. Maybe, maybe we'll check back with her and see uh, if she comes back. I, I hope she does. She's, I mean, she's, she's like one of the social uh, media uh, you know, gurus, or you know, real social media person. So, author of the Woofy Factor, Tara Hunt. Uh, we get a snoring dog. So, uh, thirty-hour day. Uh, the Oregonian ran a little piece on thirty-hour day. Sean Libby. Thank you, three a.m. Web surfers, go check that out. Uh, I've been working on the tech since 8 a.m. this morning, and I'll be back in the square at 8 a.m. And uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty crazy. Uh, we got over there, we got everything secured, and uh, dog, the dog won't even show its face. What's up with that? Anyway, um, I have some coffee here, and uh, oh, my coffee's empty. This really pisses me off. Um, it turns out my first guest drank my coffee. Oh, there's more coffee coming. So I think, uh, you know, and how do I survive? How do I survive on, on all this uh, coffee? That's World Cup Coffee, they're a sponsor. In addition to World Cup Coffee, um, I survive on Power Bars. Now they are not a sponsor, they should be, but you know, what I survive on, and I haven't had dinner yet, so this is this is kind of dinner. Oh, look, there's coffee. So I'd like to bring my first guest on, who drank my last coffee. It really pisses me off. I'd like to get Polly, Quizmaster Polly, to come in and have a seat, and we'll talk about uh, quiz mastering. You don't you don't mind if I eat this, do you? Welcome to my little. Show. Really, the dog isn't even there. Look at this. Are you watching? That makes for great uh, viewing right there. Look at this. It's a big black dog, too, so this isn't even photographable. I think it's a pug. Is it? That's Tara Hunt from Montreal. Yeah. She's author of The Wolfie Factor. Nice. Mm. Well, how you been? Want a power bar? Okay. Yes. Hi. So you did some quiz mastering tonight. First of all, I did. say your last name. Pospisil. Pospisil. Holy Pospisil. This is why people call me Quizmaster Polly. Oh, oh, you know what? It works better if we, we put a mic on you. So we're going to try that again. There? Yep. Okay. You got the mic up. Please. So Polly... Pospisil. Polypospisil, yes. There we go. And you are a quiz master. Tell us about that. Uh, well, I run trivia nights all over town in bars around Portland and beyond. And that's kind of what I've been doing for the last four years or so. And this is a pub quiz? Pub quiz, yeah. It's Basically, it's trivia with a few little changes here and there. Mm -hmm. I just lost all my sound. Why is that? Hello. Hang on. There we go. OK. Uh, the, the joys, the joys of, of live, late anything. night <laughs> podcasting at a B location. I mean, we got the great setup with the stage and the, the lights and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And you were on stage tonight. I was. Doing the pub quiz Yes. at 9 o'clock. Yes. Well, that wasn't technically what I usually do as a pub quiz. We just threw together some trivia for the PDXFM crew. Oh, OK. Yes. How'd that go? Um, well, we ran a little shorter than we would have liked to. We didn't get set up quite as smoothly as we thought we would. So, you know, things happen in live production, and we just rolled with it and tried to have a good time. Yeah, that, that does happen. So, mm -hmm. pub quiz. So, I heard about pub quizzes a few years ago. Mm -hmm. 
like in, in London and kind of all in the UK. Is that kind of where it started and did it get popular in the US or is this kind of like a European thing or is this? Uh, it's very popular in the UK. There's a lot of people who play in Ireland and England and, you know, everywhere out there. Um, and so that's kind of where it comes from. Most of the people that play over here or have started trivia or pub quizzing over here have come from there and brought it here with them. And they saw and they liked it in the UK and they brought it back over to the States with them. When did it start taking off? Here? In the, in the U.S., yeah. Uh, four years ago when I started this, the company that I worked for had... Uh, three venues and there were three of us working there and each of us had one night mm -hmm. and nobody knew what a pub quiz was nobody really knew that you could play trivia in bars and it was something really new and there was um, the company that I worked for and there was one other person in town who was doing trivia at that time and now there's pretty much a trivia on just about every corner and every bar so is that person your nemesis what person? The other person? The other person no actually he's a great guy I like him a lot oh, that really? was Quizzy Roy Smallwood he's the guy that uh, was here in town first. He was the first person in Portland doing trivia. So you didn't just see that and go, Roy, I'm coming at you. <laughs> no, I did not. Actually, I like Roy a lot. He's a great guy. He's very good. Okay. Very good at what he does. His is more traditional with just, it's like four rounds of questions and they get harder as they go along. So it's a little bit different from the format that I use. So the first time I saw you give the mm -hmm. quiz was at the, uh, bitter, was at the end? bitter End, right? Yes. Which was right in the middle of the Timbers Army, which is... <laughs> yeah. What kind of an unfortunate timing right. right before a Timbers game is the Timbers Army. Timbers Army, uh, the Timbers uh, fan club, uh, they always gather at the bitter, bitter end right before a match. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you were trying to do pub quiz and they were trying to do Timbers Army stuff. And mm -hmm. it was kind of crazy. Those questions were really hard. <laughs> Yeah, apparently I've lost all uh, ability to judge what makes a hard question for a normal person because really? I write these questions and to me and to the crowd that I normally deal with, they're really easy. Right. You know, I mean, I was asking people last night online, do you know the answer to this? Do you know the answer to this? And everyone I know that's a regular trivia player was like, oh, those are so easy. And, you know, wow. then I came in tonight and nobody knew any of my questions. <laughs> so Again, this happened again? No, actually, Emily Gibson did really well. She knew a lot of the answers. Okay. Do you have a big brain? Me? Yeah. I, I don't know. High IQ? Is that, I is have that, a high IQ, yes. You have a high IQ? Yes. Really? Wow. Like, are you Jeopardy material? Is that what we're talking about? You know, here? I don't retain the information from the trivia. That's the problem. I love researching it and writing right. it and looking it up, and I love being a part of hosting it, and I love getting to ask other people questions. But when it comes to people questioning me, I just I can't keep track of it all. Maybe it's because I do it so much that... There's no way to store all that information in your brain. Right? Well, is that the secret? Like, I could just get my encyclopedia or I can get, you know, wikipedia.org and I can, you know, just sit there and right, type stuff way. up, you know? Questions. Well, Wikipedia is a really bad choice because you never know who's writing it and they're not generally fact-checked. So I tend to look at, like, uh, for example, researching the Portland ones, I go to Portland History and I look up there and then... Oh try to find links actually from there. You do work for this. Yeah, there's a lot of research in wow. writing these questions. Wow. Yeah. See, I would I would tend toward the Wikipedia side Just myself. I would be, copy it would paste. be Doc Normal's crazy ass pub quiz. It there would be go. like, you know, just, you know, Yes, aliens came down in the 10th century and fought. You know, it would just be nutty stuff yeah. like that. You know, that would be fun. Chariots of the gods and just yeah. all sorts of superstitions and, and craziness, right? The problem is when you get 40 or 50 people in a bar who are drinking, yeah. that are playing to win, and you start asking them questions that don't have real answers, <laughs> it doesn't you, go well. This has been an evolution of, you know, it, it started out, you know, four years ago, it was like, just sit down and write a bunch of questions and see how it goes. And you have fun in the bar. And then it got into, it's turned into this huge thing where now it's, you know, there's a process. There's a, don't use these sites. They're no good. And make sure everything is fact checked and the whole deal. So, so when you started out, did you really screw up? Um... I, uh, not, well, I screwed up a couple of times. I asked yeah. a couple of questions of a couple of drunk, angry, angry Irishmen that didn't like the uh, questions about political boundaries in Ireland. Oh. <laughs> so Ooh. that was one of my first uh, quizzes that I hosted. And uh, I had a couple of incidences where the scoring tally sheet I was using didn't work and people were really angry at me about that. So, so they get, they get 
you know, kind of brutal if, if things don't go yeah, as planned. Yeah, they do. These are all the people that were never jocks in school. They were competing because they were, you know, competing with their brains. And so that's what they bring to the table. And they want to make sure that you know that they are smarter than everyone else in the room. Do you ever do you ever get the well actually Luke's uh, lightsaber <laughs> color changed between the three? Do you ever get that one? You know oh. where you're like, oh my god, oh. Captain Kirk wore the green shirt in that episode. Yes, you know Star Wars week. In fact, um, we I hosted a quiz that was about no offense Star Wars. to all you. No, we love Star, Star Wars. Wars. Geeks are my and you know they're my money makers. I love the geeks. They're the best people in the world. Yeah, we totally love you. I'm a geek too. But um, they, you know, on Star Wars week, we had a question about how many people lose a limb in the, in the, in the Star Wars series or something. God. And oh. I actually had a woman come up and argue with me. And she stood there and she's like, I'm going to recite the scene for you. And she started, <laughs> I'm not kidding you. She started reciting the scene from me from the very beginning and went all the way through. And she'd be like, and then Darth Vader said, bah, 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 bah. and then Luke goes, bah, 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 bah. and she went through the whole scene from beginning to end telling me about this. So, yeah, it was there. There's those people are. There are a lot of them in the So was, did world. she include like the original series and then the, the, yes. the other series? Oh, yeah. Too, there was like every scene that connected to someone losing a limb. She explained it for me in depth. Like, I just think, went through the dialogue word for word. See, I think I think George Lucas, it's just after after he did the initial losing the limb in the Star Wars. He just got off on that. I mean, it was like every other yeah. Star Wars, it's like 10 people lose limbs. By the time you get to that first episode, you got Darth Maul flipping. Ah, look at that. <laughs> look, oh, look, like 10 left. limbs. So right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, wow, really? Really? That's right. Really? You know? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. They finally stuck the lightsaber through the door. It's like the thing you waited for as a kid. It's like... What do you mean the door closed? Just take that damn lightsaber and stick it through the door and open the door, right? That's true, yeah. That was the only scene in that movie I liked. Really? Like, you didn't like the final one? Uh, the one where Anakin turns? Is that the one you're talking about? Oh. <laughs> Let's not talk about Galaxy Star Wars. Sailor Why are we talking still about here? <laughs> Yeah. Are the stormtroopers still here? Because they're, they're going to... I'm going to lose some limbs tonight. If they're... If, uh, hopefully oh, they're left. Oh, and people will talk to me firmly about it tomorrow, I'm sure. <laughs> if I say anything... I'm the guy. I'm the guy who said, you know what, Star Wars. That was a great, you know, 13-year-old experience mm -hmm. when I was, you know, young. Right. Um, that's it. Right. Done. And yeah, the other movies were kind of interesting and stuff. But after a while, you were like, uh, okay. Yeah. It's just another bigger lightsaber battle or a bigger, you know. But you didn't come here to talk about Star Wars. <laughs> no. I get enough of that in my daily job. <laughs> so, um, so you're really smart. Wow. You have to ask really smart questions that no one can answer. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I get that a um, lot too. <laughs> so, I mean, are you are you doing that? you're doing this like every night, right? Almost every uh, night. four nights a week. Four yeah. nights a week, mm -hmm. right? And this is a national thing. So this is a whole it's like the, you got quiz masters all over the country. Right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, not, we the company I work for has them in uh, Seattle and other parts of Oregon and Oregon right now. But we've actually went, one of our quiz masters flew out to New York last year mm -hmm. and hosted a private party. And we've done a lot of big corporate events and stuff like that. Where's the hotbed in the U.S.? Where's the hotbed of, of trivia? Trivia, yeah. Um, I would say probably Seattle. Well, Seattle used to be. I don't know if it still is, but Seattle about five or six years ago was mm -hmm. really hot for that. And I believe out in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh um, and Philadelphia around that area is pretty big as well. Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Seattle. Mm, that's what I hear. I don't know. Hmm. Could be. Oh, there's a big guy in um, Wisconsin, I believe. Yeah. And Portland? Portland's Portland okay? is big. Yeah. We've got a lot of them out here. Okay. A lot of thinkers. So what... what? Uh, I hate doing this. So, so what kind of questions would you would you ask? Uh, uh. Depends on the theme. I mean, every week is a different theme, so you know we get different questions about all kinds. So of give me give me a rundown of the last few weeks of the different themes that you had. Uh, we had USA as a theme, so we had lots of questions okay. about which president um, kept an alligator in the bathtub, which president. Uh. <laughs> like I'm supposed to know that? People know that. I'm telling you, it's crazy. 
It's it's insane that things. It's not the done. lightsaber Star Wars people. No, though. well, no. Their brains are. Full. These are the well, same people. Really? They. I believe what happens is we send out an email on Sunday, letting people know what the theme is, and they read that theme and oh. they they study. They cheat. They study. They cheat. They don't cheat. They study. They cheat. There's no cheating. They're really? studying. Oh yeah, and they study and they study all week long up until the day of their quiz, and then they're prepared. Wow. Yes. Okay, so, th so that's, that's what I was doing wrong. So I need to show up to the quiz prepared and studied. That's right. Apparently, that's what, well, you know, there's a lot of people who just want to show up and have fun, too. Right. So it just depends on what you're in it for. But the people who are there to really win, they, they do study. So it's not like the, like the Jeopardy people where it's like, you know, here's, here's the subjects and some guy just like rocks every subject. Some woman as well. Well, we I do mean, it on not... teams, so it depends. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Sometimes you get uh, certain teams that are really good at, you know, name that tune, and certain teams that are really good at historical stuff, and then there are some teams that are just good at everything. How big are the teams now? Six people. Six usually, people Up to per six team. people, yeah. So it could be anywhere from one to six people. Okay, and how many teams? Are just it just depends various? on the venue. Anywhere from, you know, five teams to 18, mm -hmm. 20, 25. So, okay, so, so the last few themes that you've run... Mm -hmm. Like, give me like the last three or four type. So you uh, you, you had USA. We had USA. Uh, alligator that. in the bathtub. Yes. Like pfft. alligator in the bathtub. Also things about you know which was signed first, the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. Uh huh. Um, okay. <laughs> Too easy. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna, you got uh, which president had the alligator in the bathtub right. and you, which was signed first. Right. You know, uh, okay. It's a toss up. You know, yeah. you gotta have you gotta have hard ones that people have to think about and you really get excited about knowing. But you also have to have ones that people want to know and get right off the bat. That keeps them playing right. along. You know, so there's definitely a certain rhythm to a quiz like that. Okay. All right. Um, we had, like I said, we've had Star Wars themes. Yeah. We've had lips as a theme, which was lips. This, yeah, we do all kinds of random stuff just to, you know, come up with themes that can encounter, you know, take up a lot more information. So, so one of the quizzes would be, you know, name that body part, or, or I mean, or, no. <laughs> it was like songs about lips or by um, artists that had lips in the title of their name and okay. things like that. You know, so you, you find creative thing. ways to fill up the themes. We had, um, we've got a theme that's going to be like things that sound dirty but aren't. Um, we've oh, got, that would be a good one for we've me. We've got funny things that you, you know, like um, uh, what are the magazines at the checkout stands, those kind of magazines. The tabloids. Tabloids. We've got a tabloid <laughs> quiz coming up. <laughs> tabloid, I knew that. Thank you. Wow. I'm good at that. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I, I think I think the, the the euphemisms that would that would be one of mine. Mm -hmm. That'll be a fun one. Because I'm a guy. Guess. Yeah. And it's like everything is a you you know. Right. It's like you know, you know. Did you pour me some coffee? It's like oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> like tonight on stage when I had them playing with their balls. <laughs> there. Yeah, I actually missed that. I wasn't. Did I wasn't, you miss it? Well, I was. Uh, that was the one time I was not there mm. on site. I, I totally missed the awesome rockabilly band. I was listening they to them down the street. They were very good, yes. Because we were actually setting up here at Web Trends, uh, in the Web Trends studio here, which is all kind of brand new. Um, so yeah, so I didn't get a chance to see the quiz. I didn't get a chance to see the rockabilly band, but I could band hear them great. and I saw a big crowd. So I just get to show up and close everything and, you know. That's the best job. Um, so the next, uh, so you're gonna do this next week. Any n new subjects or anything? Anything you're thinking of? Or how about how about this? What's the one subject? What's the one quiz, pub quiz subject that you're like really on it? You're like, I gotta do this one. Um, you know, we had a wine and cheese quiz that I thought was oh, really great. It was all that, beer, wine. I could cheese. do that. Yeah, it was really to me that was like the that. one quiz that I got to to be a part of that people would, you know, be like, oh, this isn't right. And I was like, oh, no, I know that. What do you call it? E yeah. In Enophile? No. Is that right? Enophile? It's a wine. Yeah. Is that yeah. a wine person? Mm -hmm. It's a cheese enthusiast. I don't know. No, it's wine. It's wine. Yes. Yeah. Is, is it right? Eno or Arno? Some, I don't know. I, I don't messed know. that one up. Yeah. Um, that I could be wrong. Um, yeah. Wine and cheese. That's I a good one. That. Beer is always fun. Um, cocktails is one I look forward to every year. That's a, that's always a fun one. That gets is that just kind of like what's in this cocktail, or if I describe these ingredients? Yeah, what is that, that kind of thing? Yeah. You know, Harvey Wallbanger. 
you know? Uh, yeah, right. You kind of give ingredients and people have to come up with a drink and things like that. So if there's not a bell or a buzzer or anything, no. you, don't have, you don't do survey says. Oh, no. Oh. In you can't use questions oh. with surveys. People will take you down because they'll be like, that's not a, that's not a right answer. It's, I'm telling you, it's got to be fact-checked, and you have to have references to back it up because someone will always get you live in a bar in front of 50 people. So how exactly does it work? So it's, just, it's like you've got teams, mm -hmm. you ask questions, mm -hmm. you tally the answers. Mm -hmm. I play music in between. Okay, and then... And then I read winner. back the answers, and then... Um, and then I read back the scores, and then we go into the next round. And then um, we have usually like two little handout rounds that are um, fun little things that people can work on that are usually like pictures of movie titles or mm -hmm. things like that that people have to identify. And then it's all worth points. And then we have a final round at the end where they get to bet their points to try and win. So you get pictures and musical numbers and things like that that you have to identify. Right. Gotcha. Well, that's the pub quiz. Anything else you can tell us about yourself other than, are you really tired? You know, I was surprised. I, I'm, I'm always up late, but it's surprising how much different it feels to be driving in your car or doing something like this at 1 o'clock in the morning than to be sitting at home yes. in your pajamas looking at the Internet. So yeah, it's yeah. a lot different. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Been up since. I noticed there was some lounging going on on the couches right before I came. So Yeah, That's after good. this, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to do some uh, lounging uh, my, myself. Do some sleeping, yeah. Actually, some sleeping and, and you know, having a More couple power of power bars. bars and some coffee. That'll Actually, I don't need to, but I can't get too tired because 8 a.m., i got to be back down there. we got to, like, do this yeah, hand off again. Yeah, they invited so. me to come do the sauce tasting in the morning with the morning Ooh, submission crew. Sauce, when are we doing that? I want with morning taste. submission, you want to come do it too? Oh, that's at eight. I think yeah. that's here. Is that here? That's yeah. right. I want eight to taste some sauce. Well, it's, well, no. Did you hear what they have in mind? No, I mean maybe I don't want it. Do I you know want they to know did what they're doing? Tasting. Well. No, this is condiments, and they're going to be mixing the condiments together, Ugh. and you have to identify which condiments are in the mix. Oh, those guys. They're very creative, aren't they? And gals. <laughs> they just. I, uh. They torture themselves. <laughs> You know what? For the pleasure be, of others. <laughs> that would be fine with me. I'd totally do that just as long as every mixture ingredient ends with sriracha. Lots of sriracha. There you go. Then it kills the taste of everything else, yes. Right. Not it's so spicy. bad. Although, I don't know if you put sriracha in ranch dressing and mayo, I don't Ooh, know. Or that ranch dressing good. and relish. Spicy, spicy ranch. Okay, that's not so bad. Spicy ranch. Tonight's hour for... 30 Hour Days, sponsored by Doc Normal's Spicy Ranch. Ask for it by name. Ranch, and oh, the dog's moving. <laughs> the dog's licking. Can we get the, can we get, there's movement. There's movement in Montreal. What's that? Dog's on the green screen. Oh, you figured out the green screen. Thank you. Reed has, has figured out the green screen. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, so uh, Spicy Ranch. Uh, quiz. Quizzes, pub quizzes, Polly, pa pa ta pa pa pa. Pospisil. Pospisil. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get that right. It's okay. Everybody Pospisil. calls me popsicle, so I'm getting used to it. That's interesting. <laughs> so I think we'll let you go, and I really appreciate you being here. Sure, Polly. it's great to be here. Yeah, it's probably this is the second time I think we've spoken in person. I believe so. And thanks for coming down to 30 Hour Day. Yeah. Donate because this is great content and we're bringing this content to you for free like Polly doing the quiz on stage so that you donate to your cause. You can use Facebook causes to go donate or if you're in uh, Portland, Oregon, you can donate to the uh, uh, Oregon Food Bank, the Red Cross, Pear, or donate to your own local causes in your own local city where you live, and just let us know. Send us a message. Tell us what you got. Thank you, Polly. Thank you, Paul. It's good to see you. You too. So do we have, uh, so we're, we're a little crazy here right now. Do we have uh, DJ sounds yet? Do we have some, some music? We'll see if we can get something going there. I hope the record button is on. That's all I ask, right? <laughs> Oh, I hear something. Uh, that these are not working. Hold on for one oh. second. So I think next uh, we'll do Aaron. 
There we go. Oh. We have sound over there too. Props. Yep. So we'll bring in the bring in a little DJ. This is Mr. Ballistic. Ready when you guys are? Sure. All right, now crazy talk has started. back all right 
So uh, that was uh, our DJ, Mr. Ballistic. Thank you very much. We'll be hearing more from him as the uh, evening crazy talk continues. Now, right now, I'm here with Aaron Hockley of Social Photo Talk. Hello. Hello, Aaron. Uh, and uh, so that's at socialphototalk.com? That's correct. All right. Uh, what do you do over there at socialphototalk.com? Social Photo Talk is all about helping photographers, whether they're hobbyists or professionals. Before you go, do, do you need a power bar? I'm good. Okay. I did have dinner, unlike you. Yeah. Um, Social Photo Talk is all about helping photographers um, understand what they can do with social media related to their photography, whether it's a hobbyist who's just trying to find interesting ways to share their work, or a pro who wants to do that, plus figure out how it can help them make more money. So, you know, I understand photographers, you go out, you take pictures, you either do, you know, professionally, semi-professionally, you take pictures of the kids, I understand the social media thing. What's what's the what's the mashup here? What 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 do you help people with? A lot of it is either figuring out. Well, I'd like to think we've moved beyond the point of figuring out and arguing about whether or not they should use social media. Hmm. Um, I've kind of stopped writing those articles on the website. I figure that you know. I kind of figure at this point, if photographers aren't doing social media of any sort and they think, you know, Facebook's just a fad and this whole internet thing might not catch on, um, I'm probably not going to convince them and so it's not really worth spending much of my time on that. Um, I think where it's interesting um, is, you know, especially for pros, is figuring out how they can use social media to, you know, reach new clients and to stay better connected with their existing clients. Um, so is it mainly, is Social Photo Talk mainly focused on uh, pros and people who are like, you know, amateurs who are trying to break into more of the professional yeah, side? It's, it's definitely for people who are serious about their photography, you know, so whether they're pros or they're kind of the serious hobbyists. The enthusiasts. Who, the enthusiast yeah. who likes to share his, you know, work on Flickr and, mm -hmm. you know, is interested in getting it out there and getting it in front of a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... So are we are we seeing some of uh, some of the photos today from Thirty Hour Day in the in the background? Oh, great! Are we or we we got that? So so what you're seeing back here is all of the shots that Aaron has posted to Flickr uh, from uh, from our first uh, our first stint there from four to uh, I don't know four till nine something or nine whenever something. whenever things wrapped down uh, right. wrapped up down at the square. That was, that so. was the band I missed. Is this this this? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I could the, hear them the down the street. Shifters. They were yeah, they were tearing it up. They were really good. Yeah, there was a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of folks down there. So how many how many shots did you uh, post to Flickr? I, um, just in this time period. Um, I think between so when I started taking photos about four and wrapped up about nine nine thirty. Um, Miss Polly. Yeah, I edited it down. I think I posted 90-something photos from that time period. 90 photos Flickr from a time period of how many hours? About five, I guess that would be. Five hours, 90 photos. Wow. And that's actually, that picture is of Christine. That's our, our studio setup. You're yeah, there's a couple the that I... Studio here at Web Trends. Camera phone um, up here. Ooh, can play again. Yeah. So tell us about the workflow here, Aaron. I mean... So yeah, so I, I ended up publishing about 90 photos. I probably took four or five times that many photos. Um, what I've done, and I think I've published these in kind of three batches thus far. So I was down there at the square. Um, I was shooting. At now wasn't this something, didn't you do something, like you were at the first 30 hour day and you kind of created a system of how you would shoot and then pub and then select and publish to Flickr? Yeah, it's definitely um, it's something that I've developed both with the previous 30-hour day and I've actually done a couple at like, corporate events where they've wanted to have like a rapid thing, you know, like a company meeting and you know at intermissions in the meeting they wanted to have shots from earlier in the day up on screen mm -hmm. and things like that. And so what I found is, you know, shoot, when I get to kind of a natural break where I can step away from the action for, you know, 20, 30 minutes maybe, 
um, you know, had a couple opportunities where there was a band that was playing for, you know, 45 minutes, so I get some shots of them and then step away. Um, Got a laptop down there, import all my photos. I use Adobe Photoshop Lightroom to kind of sort, manage, and do some processing on those. Uh, really quickly, I'll just bring them all in, go through them very quickly, and give them a rating, um, basically to pick out these are the really good ones that I'm going to want to publish. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some, uh, they're called develop presets, but essentially it's kind of pre-configured actions of things to do to the photos, maybe, um, you know, sharpen it a tad, give the colors a slight boost. Um, so kind of what I'll do is select the batch that I've decided I want to publish. Do you managely, do you managely? Magic. Hey, you know what? It's, it's, uh, it's early. One, uh, 120 right now, <laughs> at 120 a.m. Do you manually go through and select each photo, or is there some sort of system you have? It, it's manual, but it's very, very rapid. So I might... So how do you do that? Because I think the biggest problem that people have, and certainly it's the biggest problem people have as photographers, as amateurs, using Flickr, using digital cameras, using two gig compact flash cards, is that I can now uh, take 40 pictures of your nose mm -hmm. and I could post it's those. It's really easy to post all 40 pictures of my nose if you wanted. Exactly. Probably not going to drive. Maybe not no your nose, but maybe Polly's nose, the previous guest. Maybe, but, you know. yeah. Um, but uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, y it's, it's hard to say how you choose which ones. A lot of it. It's but don't really people just, just, because they're using digital cameras and because they have Flickr, they just, like, okay, everything out of the flash card gets posted. They can. Um, but that's not good practice. Not right? really, because one of the tricks, don't let anybody in on this now. One, uh -oh. of the, one of the tricks as a photographer is if you want to have people think you're a really good photographer is you only share your really good photos. Hmm. So, you know, I shot probably you know, five, six hundred photos this afternoon, and I published 90. Hmm. So some of those were just not good shots. Some of those were like, I'd have, you know, four or five shots that are very similar. Pick the best one and publish that one good photo out of those four or five similar shots. Um, but that's still a manual selection process. Yeah, it is. So it takes your um, eye and... Yeah, and, you know, it's something that you would kind of figure that out over time, but, you know, I mean, the software helps. So in Lightroom, I can bring up this batch of photos, basically put it into a mode where I have it on, and it'll bring up a photo, and I can real quickly hit, you know, you rate them by a numerical system, one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. and I can just real quickly hit two, and as soon as I hit two, it advances to the next photo and brings it up full screen. I hit a number, it advances to the next photo. So I can rate them at like, you know, one second per photo even. So you use that software tool to go out and do a, uh, literally do a, uh, like a, a scoring. Yeah. I, just to, off the top of your head. Off the top of my head, these ah. are good. And then what I do, you know, is take all the ones that I've said, okay, I think these are probably candidates to get published. Um, kind of apply a default set of, you know, make this photo look good enhancements to it. Um, and then I will spend a few more seconds with each photo to take a quick look and see, do I need to do any cropping? Is something maybe slightly out of vertical? I want to, you know, adjust the rotation a mm -hmm. little. Um, did I end up picking, you know, three really great shots that are all really similar, so I still only maybe want to publish one of those. Um, and so then once I've figured out which ones I do want to publish, um, I will tag them, you know, so we're putting the 30, H, you know, 30 HD tag um, along with I've tagged them with, you know, Portland PDX, Pioneer Courthouse Square, uh, a bunch of things like that. Are you able to tag them all? In, I can tag them all at once. Oh, um, that's great. I'm not going through, you know, so one thing that's lacking, you know, is in an effort to get these published real quickly, I'm not going through and tagging attributes of each individual photo. So, like, people's names aren't tagged into the individual photos at this point. I'll probably go back and put those on. Sure for the long term, but um, I'll tag the photos, um, give them all a title and description, and again, I can do this in bulk, just apply the same title and description to all of the photos that says, you know, this was taken at 30 hour day, and here's the link to the website, and it's, you know, come on mm -hmm. down. Um, and then I, there's a batch uploader that I can take the set of photos and say, upload it to Flickr. As part of that uh, batch uploader, I can tell it what groups I want to send it to, so I can automatically have it go into the 30-hour day group on Flickr. Um, 
send it up there, and then once I verified that it uploaded, we send out a tweet, and people can take a look at it. And we've had several hundreds of views on the photos already. So. Well, this is yeah, and this is just a great example of this event and of this process of you, you know, doing this and 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 you know, as a professional and as putting this together. I think the real time posting is such a key. Um, you know, we do that all the time with video. I mean, we're, we're streaming live right now. This is as real time as it gets. But then later, you know, we've got keynotes. Uh, we did, uh, you know, people are like, hey, when are you having that panel mm -hmm. on, you know, community management back online? And you're sitting there going, <laughs> oh, I got to get that turnaround time done. So, um, yeah, people, people like the rapid the rapid feedback, you know, this type of environment, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, company events, they love that stuff, seeing those photos as soon as they can, um, you know, and so this is what I did, you know, today I was kind of the official photographer for the segment down at the square. Um, we've got Igal Koshevoy, who's here right now somewhere, <laughs> taking photos of uh, all the activity here in Studio B. He's processing those photos and we'll be getting those uploaded as we speak. And, uh, Tomorrow morning, down at when the variety show starts down at the square, we've got another photographer, Kate Borst, who will be there. Um, she'll be doing the same thing, and then we'll wrap up tomorrow evening. Mm -hmm. So, well, cool. Anything else? Uh, any other impressions of uh, thirty-hour day, uh, thirty-hour day uh, two that you have? It, it's interesting having been part of the first one um, to now kind of come back and see how this one's evolved a bit. I really liked having it down in the square this afternoon. That was, you know... I'm glad you did. The, <laughs> I, I can imagine the logistical pieces of that for the tech crew were a lot more complicated than having it in a private office like it was the first time. Um, Although it, it but, was a little bit, of, little bit of both, different different challenges. Yeah, the, the dynamic challenges. was definitely a little different down yeah. there, and by the time... You know, this, the crowd was a little slow to form at first. I was a little bit mm -hmm. nervous that first segment. Um, it was also a little rainy. Um, yeah. But by the time we got to, you know, 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock, uh, there was a really good crowd forming for some of the, the great entertainment that we had tonight. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see how things go tomorrow when we've got the variety show back down there all day long. Yeah, the variety show starting at 10 a.m. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> we have to fire that all up from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. There's a curfew there so you can you have to stop making noise at 10 p.m. and you can't be there in midnight you know so we, we had to shut down and come over here um, it, but uh, it's it's uh, there's gonna be that variety show that runs I don't know until four or six or something like that and ten bands and comedians and everything it's gonna be crazy and I'm, I'm sure it's gonna draw a crowd it's a Saturday it's supposed to be sunny in Portland uh, which we haven't had that many sunny days. Like three, so, I think, this year yeah. so far. So it's it's probably going to get really crazy down there. Yeah, it'll be good. So anybody who's local, you've probably already gone to bed by now. But if you haven't, <laughs> once you sleep in a bit, come on down. Uh, yeah. It'd be great to have you. I'll be back down there in the afternoon for the the closing segments. And, and, and if you yeah, and if you're in a different city, if you're in Europe, if you're you know, we're gonna have D, we're gonna have more DJs here late at night. That was very popular uh, uh, at the last thirty hour day. Just tune in. Just listen, listen to bands. Check out what's going on. It's uh, it's up up on the UStream there. Um, check it out. It'll be fun. So Aaron Hockley, socialphototalk.com, and I think we'll uh, toss over to a little uh, Mr. Ballistic here and uh, and uh, have some more DJ work, and we'll check in with uh, Tara Hunt in a minute, author of the Woofy Factor from live from Montreal. All right. It's been a long time. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm I'm just kind of cue us. How many weeks shows just left through? Time's up. I'm sorry, I can't keep up with this. You keep repeating your mix. The rhyme from the microphone solo quiz. So you sit by the radio and the dial soon. Had to hit it. Pump up the volume. Yeah. Put the speaker to your head again. Turn in a headphone and say the word. It's a the word when it's heard to control. Your body to dance. So, gotta text the tempo like a red alert. Reach it to reflex and let it work. When this is playing, you can't get stuck with the steps. So to say, and I'ma still come up with a good to be swift. Follow the leader. The bottom of the death. Death, 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 death. Death, 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 death. 
with the record. Death, death with the record. With the record, that would make the long time ago. It could be done, but only you can do it. For those that can dance and clap your hands to it. I start to think, and then I sink into the paper like I was in. When I'm writing, I'm trapped in between the lines. I when I finish the rhyme, I got soul. soul, soul. Welcome to Crazy Talk, hour 17, no, hour, we're here at 1.35, uh, not 1.35, about 132 and a half. Um, I, uh, about a week ago I bought this big Mac Daddy watch just for 30 hour day. I, uh, my watch has been broken, I've had the iPhone for, for the longest time, I checked the time, so I'm like, ah, I need a Mac Daddy watch, right? So 30 hour day, right here. Um, so... It's going well. I think the stream's up. I think. I hope someone's watching the stream. I'm not watching it here. Um, we're here late night. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're in a different time zone, you might just be waking up. We're here at Web Trends. This is Studio Web Trends. Uh, we, this is a makeshift Studio Web Trends. Uh, we'll be later in, in several hours. We'll be back at Pioneer Courthouse Square. In, Portland, Oregon. It's like the center of Portland, Oregon. We've got a stage there. We've got ten bands playing comedy. We had three or four bands tonight. Uh, comedy interviews. It, it was crazy. We'll be back doing that. We'll have a whole variety show. show. Even more entertainment. So the reason we're doing this is we're creating free content. And we call it kind of free content for good. It's like a telethon, right? Like the old school telethon, you guys are watching this content for free. You can embed this on the website. If you go up to Ustream and you go up to the channel, you can just embed, put it on your website. You can use this to raise money for your own uh, charities, your own causes. So you could 
just put this on the website, entertain people all day, and, and say, hey, raise money for my cause. You can go up to Facebook Causes. That's what we use to raise money. We're raising money for local charities in Portland, Oregon, for the uh, Red Cross uh, Portland, Oregon chapter, for the Food Bank, for uh, the people at Pear. But you could also do this, uh, the same thing for yourself uh, as well. Um, if you just, uh, um, you know, embed it in your site, ask people, hey, watch this and donate, you know, in my local community. It's a new idea. We're still working through it, but uh, I, think, I think it has legs. Uh, I do have to ask my producer, Reed, am I coming through on the, on the mic? Are you monitoring me on headphones? Okay, cool. My headphones are a little low, but that's fine. So uh, I do want to check in with uh, one of my special guests. My special guest tonight, that's right, Miss Rogue herself. It's, 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 it's um, Tara. She's, she's from Montreal. She wrote The Woofy Factor, and uh, she's live on Ustream right now. Um, that's, that's not her. That's, uh, that's a dog. That's, I, I don't know. I tuned into her channel. She set up the Skype. She said, sure, we're going to talk. Um, we'll have an interview, and uh, I, th I think she fell asleep with the dog. It's, I don't know. It's like, what? Uh, it's Montreal, right? It's uh, three hours. It's like three or four hours. So there's the dog. And we did have DJ Mr. Ballistic playing. We're going to hear uh, a lot more from him. Probably get him over and do a little interview. But now, my other special guest tonight, and we've had some pretty good special guests. Good for, oh, oh I think the dog snored. <laughs> I got the headphones on. I heard, I heard some noise. Either, either that or kind of you know, past gas or something. Anyway, uh, so tonight on the show, getting off of his shift is uh, my good friend Gary Walter. Gary is a longtime paramedic, local paramedic. Um, he's got lots of stories to tell about that. And you've kind of gotten back into the parametric, parametric. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. I've been up pretty late. Paramedic game, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did you, you got off at like midnight or something like that? Pretty close to it. it worked a little bit over tonight, but uh, yeah. good to be here. Good to see you. You know, it's funny that you mentioned a new watch because I got a new watch today, too. Look at this. Yeah. Man, yep. Daddy watches. Fourteen ninety nine at Fred Meyer. Oh. This is from the, I'm not going to say who no. this is. I, I went to put my watch on this morning, and yeah. when I pulled on it, it's, it's about a 10-year-old watch that my brother-in-law gave me, and I went to pull on it, and the strap broke. And a paramedic without a second hand is virtually useless. I had, so I stopped it. You got like. Do you need milliseconds? You have, have milliseconds. like five second hands. Yeah, my daughter loves the milliseconds. I bet she does. She's like, this has milliseconds. Because, because our kids want time to go faster. And so that they want to grow up so fast. Have you noticed that? How, they do, kind of. Wait, wait, kind wait. of. What is she? She's like Eight. Uh, under ten, but she thinks yeah. she's eighteen. Yeah, she's still, she's still, she's pretty, pretty well grounded actually. Good. Good. She's, she's a good grounded kid. So uh, you got some coffee. I right? got some coffee. You know what? I didn't know that Quizmaster Polly was going to be here, but I came she awesome? prepared with a quiz for you. Oh no 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> they better all be softballs. Because I, 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 got, I, got, I, got, I got three questions. I, I, uh, I wrote them down this afternoon. Um, this isn't how this was supposed to go. I know that. Actually, uh, what was supposed to happen is he was going to come in here with the blood pressure machine and the <laughs> paddles and the, <laughs> okay, are you alive? Are you alive? Yeah, it, sure. You know, the, the problem is, it's not a problem. It's, it's actually a good thing. But my new employer has a very strict social media policy. Yeah. And they don't want their name used uh, without their permission. Okay. And so uh, I, and, and my training officer... Uh, 
was asking me, he said, you better review that policy before you go in the air today. No. And uh, he was like, scared me, he told me about people who had been fired and stuff. So uh, um, I was like starting to sweat and, and yeah. uh, you know, getting all nervous. See, I kind of feel like- Did you tell him it's for charity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and, 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 and he's a good it's guy and, good. and he's, a, he's a grandpa and EMS like I am. But see, I feel like Rip Van Winkle. Yeah, I feel like I fell asleep and I have awoken after 15 years, and the world is different. I know this feeling. The world. I feel is very like I different. fell asleep about a half an hour ago. <laughs> I was watching you listen, <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." And, oh, and, by the way, did you want yeah. a power bar? No, I. My son loves those. I have one that's about 15. These guys years really old. should be sponsoring yes, 30 hour day. <laughs> I have one of those that I bought at Costco like 15 years ago, and I keep it in my desk drawer. It's probably still good. And when my son Trust me. asks for it, I give him a little piece, and he loves it. Um, it comes out of daddy's desk, so it must be cool. Um, no, I. Um, I do. I feel like Rip Van Winkle. It's it's like the world has changed. It's like imagine waking up and all of a sudden there's cell phones and computers and mm -hmm. and all these things have affected our your life and and maybe like when you were born those things didn't exist mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. is maybe the case of you and I <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe maybe um, so is that like the difference uh, because early on I think one of the most fascinating things that you've told me in the past and that we did an interview gosh a strange of live uh, what was that, a year, year and a half ago yeah, or something, something like, like that? that yeah. um, I encourage you to go. I don't think we had video on that back then, but you can go listen to it. Um, I've actually posted it on my blog. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But you were talking about you were in the early Life Flight program? Mm hmm. Well, Life Flight started in 1978. Um, it was the uh, third program in the United States, for the third emergency medical program. Program in the US. And that's in Portland, Oregon. In Portland, and and um, so 1978, I think Denver was first, and I forget who had the first program uh, or the second program, and then Portland started uh, right in there. And then 10 years later, they decided to add paramedics to the program, and I was one of the original 14 paramedics hired into that program. So when so when the program started, they, I mean, it's hard for me to, I mean, imagine back that time that there weren't paramedics. On life flight. Well, life it, flight being the helicopter that flies down. I mean, I think every major city has yeah, it now. You know, the, the life flight, care flight, um, yeah, um, airlift. They they call them different things in different cities. They put critical care nurses on the helicopter originally. Oh, and okay. Here they did. Baltimore, Maryland was one of the one of the first to get started up too, and they put state patrol officers who were trained paramedics. That was it, that's how it, the Baltimore program was run, and. Um, uh, but what they would do here is a lot of those helicopter flights were inter-facility transports and they only barely began to do scene calls where they would oh. actually land in freeways and backyards and places. So this was like as, we the, to, as it developed. So somebody maybe would be at a hospital already and they needed critical care at another yeah. hospital that could provide so it would be inner hospital you know fly them from yeah. here to here. Like, like right, right. now uh, Life Flight has a contract with uh, Longview Hospital up by my house and the university, and any cardiac patients that are taken to the Longview Hospital, mm -hmm. Life Flight automatically flies them to the university to be treated. And so that's how they kind of got started. Well, as they begin to land on scenes and treat victims of car wrecks and things like that, mm -hmm. they would take a paramedic from the scene, uh, either a fire paramedic oh, or an ambulance on to paramedic, onto the helicopter to help treat the patient. And after a while, they figured out that, hey, why don't we just add paramedics? And mm -hmm. then we're working with people that are trained. And, and can work in the... Yeah. What's so they, it like working at, you know, something I'd never asked you. What's it like being a paramedic and working in a helicopter? Uh, I mean, it, how big is that thing? How it, it, the, the first helicopter that I worked on, it was a uh, Bokal 105. It's a German helicopter. It was designed for combat. Um, and uh, they still use them in the Middle East to shoot back at our guys. But um, it's an amazing helicopter. It's the only helicopter that can fly upside down. It can do... It can do barrel rolls, it can okay. do loops, it can do, uh, it was an amazing helicopter, but it's about the size 
of my Subaru Outback inside. Oh my gosh. And so you put a pilot, a paramedic, a flight paramedic, a flight nurse, and we could even put two patients in there um, if we had to. How but do you the, work in that you environment? Just, you just, you try to do as much as you can. And what are you carrying? Because you, I mean, you've got to carry you're basically gear. carrying everything an ambulance carries. You got uh, critical care drugs, uh, advanced life support drugs, cardiac monitor, uh, IV pumps, uh, oxygen. There's a whole point. You're just trying to keep the patient alive to get to the hospital. Yeah, as yeah, as well, possible. Stabilizing, intervening. Um, you know, I, I I have actually been in the helicopter. Um, doing CPR with one hand and squeezing what's called an ambu bag with the other hand, uh, breathing for a patient, and um, while the flight nurse is hooking up IVs and, and pushing mm -hmm. blood into the patient and things like that. And uh, uh, one time I remember I was kind of leaning against the door and, and doing all this, and I had taken my seatbelt off so I could lean over this child that we were taking care of that had been run over by the family car. Mm -hmm. By the way, Always look around your car before you back out oh. because it, oh. those are, have been some of the more tragic events is uh, yeah. people backing over their toddlers. And mm. uh, so I'm leaning against the door. I'm doing CPR on this kid. I'm, I'm squeezing the bag. And, and uh, all of a sudden I, I look out the window and our pilots were really good. They're, most of them were ex-Vietnam pilots and ex-military. And he was doing such a great turn that the G-forces were still pushed to the floor of the helicopter. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize the helicopter was up on its side. So when I looked out the door, leaning against this thin little fiberglass door, mm -hmm. I'm looking a thousand feet down to the ground. And if that door had popped, that, yeah. that would have been the end. I would have just tried to enjoy the ride. Um, I had a similar experience like that, yeah. just like the life flight experience. Uh -huh. uh, it was uh, flying from Honolulu to Maui <laughs> when I was about 20 two years old. In a helicopter? No, it was no, just a plane. And the small, guy small turns airplane. it and we're looking down at a whole bunch of Maui Wowie. Yeah, it's like, yeah. hey, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Which was later followed up by the cab ride I had from uh, back to Lahaina with uh, literally Cheech and Chong driving the cab. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm 20. I'm like, you know what? It's over. What the heck? You right. know, <laughs> <laughs> I've had my fun, you know. Isn't Maybe amazing? the life flight will come and get me, you know. Isn't it amazing some of the people they'll let drive cabs? I had a cab ride Especially in Maui. Like that in Kansas City. I just you want some? <laughs> no, I think I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. But I really do. I really, it, you know, EMS started here in Portland. We had the first cardiac save, out of hospital cardiac save in 1969, right here in Portland, Oregon. Um, and you were telling me it's like the 50 year anniversary of coming up here in a, a few years um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get people to kind of get geared up thinking we should celebrate this mm -hmm. 50 mm -hmm. years of, of paramedic level care and most people under 30 or 40 years old don't know that there didn't used to be paramedics mm -hmm. and uh, but there, there wasn't in the 60s we just had ambulance drivers and now we're offering paramedic level care. And uh, Hey, I grew up watching an emergency. I know all about that. So who played? Oh, this is where the quiz comes in. Who played Johnny Gage? Uh, was it, it was either, it, was it Randolph Mantooth? He is going to be the keynote speaker in Salem, Oregon at an EMS conference on October 9th and 10th. Nice. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this. I yeah. mean, you, if you go up to the website, if you watch this show, there was this, well, first of all, all right. Jack Webb, the dragnet guy, right? He turned that into a f franchise back in the day. And and as a kid who, you know, I'm I'm not as young as I look, but it's clean living, lots of these coffee and, you know, power bars. Yeah, um, and lots of sleep. And lots of sleep. <laughs> yes. Um, but, oh, the dogs, do we have the, do the dogs moving? Dog. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Like, I hope that dog doesn't look something he or she isn't supposed to. Yeah. The setup for this Skype call actually should have been on the air. It was pretty interesting. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, um, uh, Dragnet. Dra Jack Webb. Dragnet. Jack Webb. Adam 12. Emergency, which was the history of the paramedic program set in Los Angeles, right? You know. The whole first season where those poor firefighters would go to a medical emergency and, oh, 
you know, mm -hmm. I cannot save that patient if only I knew CPR, right? <laughs> Literally, That's right? right. That's right. Um, but, uh, but I grew up on it, loved that stuff. And I know the, you and I talked about this. And then you were like, well, you know, I really am a paramedic and I really was on life flight and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Gary, how small is my life? I'm sitting in front of a camera streaming on the internet, right? Uh, yay. That, that's not small. That's not small. You're, the, you know, what's interesting is that the Red Cross is sponsoring this hour. Yes. Isn't oh, that? the Red Cross. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I'm yeah. supposed to remember this. I don't have the tear sheets in front of me. Um, but isn't that an interesting thank you. coincidence? Uh, perfect. Perfect guess. Yes. <laughs> American Red Cross, Portland chapter, sponsoring this this uh, this thing here. I th that was probably a placement. Our ad guy probably okay. placed that. Okay. Right? Yeah. Oh, we're having a paramedic. You need to give him a raise. That's right. Her. Um. Out of the funds. Yes. Yes. Where's my power bar funds it's in my writer. You know, I did um, I did a pie judging contest last year, and some of the I remember. Red Cross people were there um, as. It, one of the judges was one of the Red the Cross. Portland Pie Off. Yeah. It was big on Twitter and social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My wife actually won that. Did she? This oh. la the last one? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Mr. B Mr. Ballistic's uh, <laughs> wife actually won that. <laughs> That's Sorry. awesome. I don't have a mic, so yeah. all that great. But <laughs> That's cool. Bring you on in a second here. <laughs> That's cool. That's very cool. <laughs> well, Gary, um, what do you think? You're going to go home and go to sleep for a while? I'm going to sleep for the next four days. I have My brain is full. I'm trying to unlearn a whole bunch of stuff that I learned mm -hmm. years ago and uh, relearn the new way of doing things. And I've been just going full steam for three weeks. And I'm going to go home and sleep for four days. And <laughs> Sounds really nice. <laughs> mm. I'd love to come back and join you uh, tomorrow, but I'm going to be sleeping and... Um, <laughs> And on the fourth, keep rubbing it in, buddy. Yes. <laughs> and on the go fourth, ahead. I'm going to go visit friends up at the lake. Who's going to? They're going to teach my daughter how to fish. So, mm. lakes, fishing, sleep. That all sounds really nice. Yeah, but uh, but it's no sleep, all for charity. Donate. But listen to this: if you fall asleep in the next hour, nobody will die. If I fall asleep in the next hour, I got an hour and a half drive home. So, uh, yeah, yeah. That's take, why I've been sitting here drinking coffee. Take it easy. Yeah. Well, thank you, Gary. Thank you for having me. Thanks for saving lives. and yeah, well, uh, It's been a lot of fun. You and I will get together again. A good friend, Gary Walter. And uh, we'll bring on uh, Mr. Ballistic here. We'll do the Daddy2.com. We'll Daddy oh, two. that's right. Daddy2.com. Yeah. Yeah. D-A-D-D-Y-T-U-D-E.com. -E. I'm, a, I'm a man with a dad attitude. So let's cut to Montreal. And I think what we'll do is we'll bring on Mr. Ballistic ballistic for a second here. All right. Again, that's live from Montreal. That's uh, that's uh, Tara Hunt's webcam. Um, I, I think she fell asleep. We we had worked this out. We were gonna do an interview. I was gonna ask her about the her book, The Woofy Factor, and and what what she's doing there in Montreal. And I, I turned on the webcam. And I'm sorry, it's, it's all I got all I got for you. But she's a wonderful uh, supporter of Thirty Hour Day, and, and we do appreciate. Uh, Having fun, having fun with her, uh, especially late night like this uh, in Montreal.
So I'm going to cut over, and uh, our DJ tonight for Crazy Talk is Mr. Ballistic. How are you doing tonight? You doing well? Uh, we got a mic on him. Are you on? I'm not hearing anything. Uh -uh. Are we hearing anything? Are we hearing uh, me? Tap, tap, on? tap. Okay. Good, good, good. We can probably cut the uh, Montreal uh, audio there. So how are you doing tonight? Well, you know, not bad for two in the morning. Yeah, thanks for coming down. We're <laughs> going we're gonna to have you uh, play us out. Uh, now, do you normally, is this normally the time you play, like two in the morning, or you do? Yeah, usually this is about when we're wrapping up. Yeah. Kicking people out of bars. When we're stuff. wrapping up, okay. Yes. <laughs> so you didn't you didn't read that you'll be playing through oh no. Oh no. I'm here till four? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can't use the couches then. Exactly. <laughs> so you were saying uh, you just mentioned we were talking about the Portland Pie Off uh -huh. and you said your wife won the Portland Pie Off. She did, Allie. Uh Alison Greco. Um, mm -hmm. she won oh goodness, what was her pie? It was a uh, white chocolate and Ooh. cantaloupe. That's what it was. Yeah, it was White chocolate and cantaloupe. Yeah, it was a really odd combination, and that's what worked, which wow. was great. It didn't have bacon on it, though. It didn't have bacon on it. She didn't quite get the, all of the memes together in order to make that work. Right, exactly. You, you got to like, really be on top of that you know, Twitter or Facebook or whatever to get the, <laughs> get the, the bacon going. Well, yeah, and I think there's probably a separate category for bacon yeah. because it would just overpower everything else. Well, bacon apple pie. There you go. Bacon apple pie is very good. It's, <laughs> it's tasty, salty, but then you have the spicy apples. It's very good. It's perfect. But they had savory pies. I'm more into the savory pies myself. I tried a couple of them. They were actually quite good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, did she? So she won the pie off. She won the pie off. She's a uh, she's a judge next time out. Oh, awesome. Do you know when it when the next one is? Uh, soonish, I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the DJ August. here. Why yeah. am I? Uh, all I know is that she's not allowed to compete in it this year. <laughs> now, did she cook pies for you? Did she? She do does. Anything? She's uh, oh. she she is an experimental foodie and also a doctor of psychology. So it's Whoa. kind of just like. Fun balance between. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'd. Uh, well, good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I got to say. She lets me go out at you know at two in the morning and play records, so that works out okay. That's awesome. Well, that's good. That's good. That's, that's you know, that's as long as she does that and lets you go, then that's great. So you're gonna play us out. Uh, it's coming on. You got uh, five minutes to two. I'm sure we're gonna start a little late, but uh, mm -hmm. feel free to play us out. Thank you so much for coming, Thanks for supporting 30 Hour Day. This is the 30 Hour Day late night live stream. Uh, you've been watching kind of uh, uh, a bit of uh, my talk show called Crazy Talk. Usually I just do it for an hour and I have a guest uh, who Skypes in. Um, check it out at drnormal.com. That's drnormal.com. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, you'll s see me at some point during the day. Uh, I'm going to go rest for a little while and then wake up bright and early and get us all down to the square. And so we'll start listening to the sounds of the sink and hopefully some DJ music. Yeah, hopefully. Let's see. Am I doing something wrong? Don't forget, Facebook causes donate now. If you're in Portland, we've got uh, the Portland chapter of the Red Cross sponsored this hour. Um, sponsors are Web Trends and uh, drinking some World Cup coffee. And we're we're just hanging out. We're killing fine. some time. I'll figure something out. <laughs> it was, it was, it's okay. It, this is the silent set. This is totally the silent set. He calls this the, uh, the uh, John Cage okay, mix. Rats. Nope. Rats. <laughs> what am I doing? Facebook causes, uh, sponsor web trends on the uh, tear no. sheet there. That would be why. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Donate.
looking down the hole, you're looking up at me. You're cold and tired, that is easy to see. Lower the rope to you, a bucket on the line. Your membrane will be soft and smooth, and your heart will be. 